Norma Jean was an undoubtedly naturally pretty girl. However, the iconic Marilyn look that we all know today is something that took several years to evolve. Three key moments in that evolution were when she dyed her hair peroxide blonde, when the head of the studio sent her to have plastic surgery to slim down her nose and also to correct an overbite. And finally, when she met her makeup artist, and this would be her makeup artist for the whole of her career, Alan Snyder, known as Whitey. They had an incredibly close relationship to the point where Marilyn even said, if I die before you, you have to do my makeup for my funeral. And it's something he did. And he was also a pallbearer. Now, the look that he had from her first screen test to when he sort of launched her as the icon she is in 1953 for Niagara, went through lots of twists and turns. But once they'd found the look, the Marilyn look, it stayed with her for the rest of the 50s and through all of her big, big films. Marilyn was incredibly keen on protecting her skin. Her favourite products for doing this were good old fashioned Vaseline and Nivea. She put a really thick layer of either one of them all over her face before she'd start doing her foundation. One can only assume that Marilyn must have had quite dry skin to be able to pile on the Vaseline without ever looking overly greasy. It's not something I'd advocate doing today, but back then it really gave her an amazing glow under the studio lights, imparting her skin with a beautiful sheen that had the added benefit of making her look ever so slightly soft focus in front of the camera. Onto the base, now there's different reports, the different types of foundation that Marilyn used. It's quite hard to get the exact details, as like all good makeup artists, Whitey never betrayed her secrets. One of the foundations she liked was Max Factor, and she also liked one called Anita of Denmark. One of the key things about Marilyn's makeup was the youthful, dewy glow. She was never one to overpowder or mattify her skin. She always looked beautifully clean and fresh. She knew that moisture equaled youth. Now the eye look that Marilyn liked was Greta Garbo's. So a lot of the sort of slightly sleepy, sort of very sexy um, shape of eye was very much based on Greta Garbo's look. To begin with, she used a white all over her eyelid just to really open up the area. Next, a luminous white, so a shimmery white colour was used to really highlight and open up the corners of her eyes. So the white was used into the corner just like that. I'm going to start by just curling Ivana's lashes and putting on some mascara. As time went on, Marilyn's makeup routine became more and more elaborate. It's rumoured to have taken up to three hours. Every aspect of a routine had a purpose. So onto the eyelashes, and Marilyn always wore a half set of lashes. This enabled her to keep that really elongated and very almond looking shape. So you can see how the half set of lashes really starts to extend the line of the eyes. Next onto the eyeliner. And contrary to popular belief, it wasn't a black liquid, it was a brown pencil. Also, it wasn't too thick. It never overpowered her look. So the liner traced all the way along the lashes, and then at the outer corner was lifted up and out, just like that. Now next into the shading element around the eyes. And one of the main things that Marilyn had was a little bit of shading just into the socket line here, just at the outer corner. And this just gave depth to the eyes, but without overpowering them. Just help them to look a little bit more deep set. Now one of Whitey's big tricks on Marilyn's makeup was to draw a line under her eyes with a, a little bit of powder or a pencil. And this was meant to look like a shadow what happened was it went down from here to look like it was a shadow from the weight of her lashes. So although it looks as if, often as if it is genuinely a shadow and you look at some of the old pictures of Marilyn, on closer inspection you'll notice with different light you always see this incredible fake shadow that's been softly drawn in underneath. 
So you can see already before we put our mascara on the bottom that you're getting the impression that there is this really quite strong shadow being cast by the super long lashes on the top. Now to further enhance this, Whitey used, look up for me, a white pencil in between the two lines. And he also used a white pencil along the inner rim or the waterline of Marilyn's eye. One of the main things that Whitey wanted to achieve with Marilyn's makeup was to give her that really heart-shaped face. One of the things that helped to achieve this was her brows, which he drew on high and very arched, giving the feeling of space between the eyes and a more wide-set appearance. So after adding some mascara underneath, you can really see now the brows, how they've taken shape. And they are giving that appearance of a very wide forehead a very wide set eyes, so the eye is immediately drawn to the outer areas of the face, so the corners of the eyes, the lashes. One of the stranger details of the eye makeup application was a dot of either red lipstick or pencil placed right at the inner corner to give her eyes a whiter, brighter appearance. Another key thing about Marilyn's makeup was the shading and the highlighting. And this is the aspect of the makeup that really gave that three-dimensional look to her face, especially for, for moving image, for film. Every time she moved, she needed to catch the light. Her contours needed to look perfect. And also it was used in a correctional way. So by shading just under her cheekbones and along her jawline, this again gave the impression of a smaller bottom half to the face. So everything was becoming very, very heart-shaped. Another trick Whitey used to do was to shade Marilyn's nose. Although she had had surgery and it corrected a lot of the sort of width, she still felt her nose was too big. So by shading down the side, and especially on the tip, it gave her nose a much shorter, slimmer appearance, which she much preferred. And this is something which worked really well on film. Marilyn always wore quite strong rouge, so very sort of healthy, pink, corally cheeks. Again, this was to make her look younger and fresher. And also it was used to shape her face. So the blusher was used along the cheekbones. It was also used above her eyebrow to shade and a little bit on her nose. The highlight of the makeup was, in fact, the highlighter. Every little bit of her face was analyzed by Whitey. So highlighter was used around the sides of her nose to give this part of her face a much flatter, wider appearance. Also down the center of her nose and into the center of her forehead. You're really under the impression that her cheekbones were extremely high her chin was extremely small, and she had this beautiful, wide, open look around her eyes. Marilyn's lip makeup is legendary. At times, she used five layers of one colour. Her favourite colour was Guerlain's Insolence. But sometimes she also used three different shades. So she'd use colours from Elizabeth Arden, from Max Factor, and from Guerlain, and, and layer it so that all of the dark colours were around the edge. And she always used a much darker lip pencil. The whole idea behind Marilyn's lip makeup was to make her lips look as huge, as voluptuous and as luscious as possible. Whitey started by using a much darker lip pencil. This was to map out the shape. The shape was very high at the outer corners. So I'm starting with a slightly darker red lipstick first. I'm using this all around the edge and at the outer corners. Next I'm going in with the, a red very similar to the red that Marilyn wore most of the time. It really brightened her face a lot. But you're starting to get the three-dimensional effect here of the dark around the edge and the dark at the outer corner with the lighter colour towards the centre. Aside from creating the most iconic lip shape of the century, it's rumoured that Whitey helped Marilyn enormously with their onset nerves. Then they would have blotted the lips and started again, putting another layer on. Just close your mouth for me. 
So building up the layers. So not only was it a trick of the light with the different colours, but also the amount of product, the amount of lipstick that he got onto her lips really added a huge amount of fullness. One of the other tricks that Whitey used to do was to add a little bit of white powder just onto the centre of Marilyn's lower lip. And this again would really add to the fullness. Marilyn and Whitey had their own special lip gloss which they mixed themselves and they'd never give away the secret. It was a mixture of beeswax probably and something else, but it was very much part of her signature look. So Whitey would often use layer upon layer, gloss, more white powder, more lipstick, more gloss. And you can imagine, just by sheer volume of product, her lips would end up looking pretty amazing. All that was left to do was to paint on Marilyn's famous beauty spot. One day you see the total While meticulous and product heavy, Marilyn's rigorous beauty regime certainly paid off. Throughout her career, Marilyn established herself as the ultimate bombshell. Photographer Milton H. Green remarked, you don't just wake up in the morning and wash your face and comb your hair and go out looking like Marilyn Monroe. She knew every trick in the book.